Watch this video with our virtual reality glasses for a smartphone. Virtualvisor.com My name is Henry Schicker from Mr. Campbell, as you can see by the head. To the mustache, I needed to shave, but I'm growing it proudly back, but it takes some time. And who, many, uh, who of you have uh, been above and I showed you some of my cardboard and some demos? Good, almost nobody, perfect. Otherwise, we'll watch it. Because we have a try hard within it, so. Um, who of you have been here last year and also got the Google Cardboard from the next? Nobody. Because I actually had it to, to fight a lot because last year people got something like like this, something you need to DIY, fold by yourself, which was very horrible. Even I have always problems to assemble that. And uh, this is kind of like typical. Uh, agency or somebody is doing a VR campaign with something with Cardboard because the client says it's cool. And in the end, they take something from China, it's very difficult to assemble, and nobody really knows what to do with it. And then it ends up in the trash, and everybody thinks VR marketing is crap, or doesn't work, or is not very, very well. So, our product is nice and simple. I also have some here, we need them later, so don't fear. You just take them out, and you pop them up when they're ready. So, it needs to be simple. And when I... I skipped through a little bit. When I was thinking about this workshop, what should I show you? I was like nailing down some questions for me, right? But the most important point is that you get the inspiration that you go home or to your offices or to your family and friends that you are inspired to try this again, to try a little bit around, to maybe buy an agency to survive. I don't have any stocks, <laughs> but it's just the best classes. And uh, come up with great ideas that really have a benefit for the user and your clients and actually make something valuable out of the art. So, and the biggest question at the beginning is what is actually VR? Um, it's, it's an interactive workshop, right? So do questions at any time, ask questions, say something, anything about it. So who's a gamer here? Who likes to play Call of Duty or other games? What a Warcraft also counts as a game? Candy Crush? Maybe? <laughs> okay. And who has, I mean, it's a kind of like question, but it's interesting. Who has tried an Oculus Rift or HTC Vive before? Who has tried it longer than one hour? Okay. Who has one by, by himself in the agency or at home? Or what kind of games do you play? Um, usually only stock games. And they're like the shooting stuff. And Raw data and it's it. Uh, yeah. Okay. And? Yeah, Project Towns, for example, that was, uh, was cool on the Oculus, and uh, I don't know the name of the song game we played with the HTC Vive, but that was pretty cool actually. Okay. It's more of a survival game now. Did you ever have the problem to explain somebody what VR is? And you cannot do this really, it's very difficult to explain. Yeah. Okay. So since, since not everybody has seen it, um, I'm going to show you a video from the HTC company, you know, from the HTC. If somebody, if everybody knows to you, just, just say next, <coughs> and then I'm going to go for the next video. But because they made it quite, quite well to show how it is actually good. We have seen that video before. Okay. Nice to show you. I have pull the directions up on here. Make sure that the base and back is in the Yes. Oh, the setup is a little bit tricky. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, what they did, the headquarter, right? They had this green box to put people actually in VR and on the green later they stitched on the virtual reality world around. So, they can now see uh, this is like kind of like an average family. I don't know if they're really average or casted or whatever. But at least they are look average and they just forget like this before. And he's just now explaining uh, that some of them will try, and the other one will see on a small screen uh, how it really looks in the real world. So you are actually the best thing to describe VR is really it's like it's like a normal world, just everything is textured, right? So you can interact, you can really move around.
Whereas you have like a whale which is like this size, so you stand there, it's very crazy. seconds you are so occupied in your brain that you don't have to think time, uh, that you don't have time to think about this is real or unreal, then you are really in. So, that's what I would say is what you're really about. But I would go one step more. Because when you look, the HTC Wild is now out for six months, and we had like three, three years development. But when you look into the store of Oculus uh, or HTC, they have like, uh, this is not the real numbers, but it feels like this. We have 60% shooters, either zombies or chicken or cans or cowboy pumpkins, whatever. Um, a lot of what else? A lot of games for you. We have like some table tennis or sports. Like everything is always kind of like the same. Puzzle games, for example, where you have to move something. Yeah, the, like the hot way. wire, something like this. Okay, that, that counts maybe. But for shooters, there's not a big thing in play in playing Call of Duty on a normal screen. Or having it in VR because most of the time you're just standing around. You can you can stare, of course, you can crouch, you can shoot, okay. But it's not that much better uh, compared to just a normal screen. So I would say if you make a VR game, the core of the game uh, needs to be the important part in VR. So when you take, so when you would try to put that on a normal TV screen, it shouldn't make sense anymore. So it has, it has to be as good that VR is not a nice feature, but it's the core feature. And there's one app which I discovered like three or four days ago, which is also available for um, board.
including the precarious deputies in order to pay the bonds to the bank and the it's kind of like a toothbrush for everybody you know, so you can do a drawing like 2D, but actually you can also look behind it, so it's kind of like a 2D sticks. Okay, so this is the first one. So far, I've seen the best use case for using virtual reality to make sense. It has nothing to do with marketing, but it's, a, it's about the point that it should make sense. So, as we learned, it has to be tried. We cannot, we cannot explain it. Imagine when you uh, want to do a VR project because your client said so, and you have never tried it, you never know how it is about it, your client also never has. You have two people in the room who think what we are is and what we maybe can do with it. But then at the end, most of the time, there comes something out of it which is maybe not so well, I would say. Um, it's not 360. Uh, somebody comes to you and say, we do virtual reality videos with a camera. And it's always like, can you do that? No, you cannot. Because you cannot decide. After the movie is made, you cannot decide where you want to go. You cannot interact, so it's not virtual reality. We have to have the movement in the world, like the child was throwing the, the stick around and was uh, chasing the dog. We have the interaction, uh, like you just saw to grab stuff and put it somewhere. Can be your hands, can be a controller. And most important of all is, is the value, right? The VR needs to be the center part of whatever you're trying to do. If you want to make a good campaign that gets hyped a lot, then this needs to be important because otherwise people just download it once and they don't share it and it's a kind of bore. And you can download all the slides later as well. <laughs> That's important to say. So, now we're cutting this a little bit down to, to mass marketing because the, the tricky thing is with Oculus Rift it costs like $600 plus the graphic card, HTC Vive also $2,000, Samsung Gear, okay, $80, but it's very tricky to pitch that to everybody. And uh, since not everybody has tried the Google Carpet or Mobile VR, I have some here and I would just like to distribute them if everybody has one. And on the link, which you can see here, this is basically a screenshot of the homepage. You can try four apps, two of them without download, because most of the time I think people have YouTube already. So you can have a look at the Bison video directly, or you can go through a ship of AIDA to go on every cabin and have a look around it. Or if you, if you dare to download 450 megabytes of this uh, Wi-Fi, you can try this one. It's kind of like a medium or a small company, or you can try it with this trip here. So, everybody come here with a
what should be, as I claim, it should be easy to, to build up. And if it isn't, then I'm responsible. So the first thing you have to do when you're missing here, you have to detention to separate it from, from the envelope. So that's basically trash out the phone out the little pizza. That's more. What do you have in front of you?
So much detail, it's just nice to see that there was Hoover Press and Las Vegas and everything, everything in small. And what they did is they used a uh, kind of like this camera, put it on the short train, and they drove uh, through the Wonderland. Hmm. So they made like, kind of like 360 pictures and videos from the perspective <laughs> of the people there. Um, this one was made available on a, on a special landing page. For the Wunderland, I think which you can also find on my, my on, the, on the next page. And it was kind of interesting because even though it was just a 360 picture, the media was, was going crazy about this. So you had like on, on Twitter, even like 8th of September, that's when I made this presentation. <laughs> and you had like people tweeting this all the time. So you had like kind of, this is now seven months old because they did this in January, as you can see. And even now people are tweeting this. You can, you can stay have a look at it, you can stay before you go, you can, you can uh, go and have a look at uh, some location, how it really is, and then you can still travel. So they don't keep it secret, they put it on, on the landing page. And if you look at the, the Google trend, how people actually search on this, it, it's kind of, of course you have a peak in January, but it even continues. I mean, you, you can judge here in April, March, but at least for, for three months, you have like, um, kind of, you're, you're dominating the media just with a very good made 361 you put on Google Street View, you have a nice landing page where you can have um, where you can show um, the the kind of attraction. So you can also use it for this way. Mm -hmm. So also if you have a company which is doing um, testing cards like motorbike engines, very dry topic. Mm -hmm. But they, they are a Swedish more company, I think they have like 20, 20 people. They use the camera to show behind the scenes how people in Germany make this with their hands. And they take this with them in their cardboard and their video with, uh, on fairs, on events, to show people, hey, have a look at my, my factory, which I have. This would be your stuff made, handmade by us. So kind of like a behind the scene video. That's also um, our Twitter in Berlin, uh, Berlin are doing this as well, to show that they, they are not an algorithm, but they have real people who, who pick the stuff for you. So you can really use it as a, uh, yeah, as a looking behind the scenes stuff. That's would be a good case for a 360 video. And what the uh, Wunderland, of course, is doing, they have our cardboard, we give them even out or sell them as a souvenir. So when you have visit there, you can take the cardboard home for uh, 10 euros or something and show it even your family and friends. So what is even better, so this is the crazy stuff they use there, but it's, it's really easy. I showed you already how it works with the street view. Or you can use it with this camera. This is the one. Yeah, the so you don't need to have a massive agency who has oh, 100,000 euros for a video or 10,000. You can basically go really go low budget, get this camera for 370, maybe it's cheaper now, um, and record. Like you can hear or take pictures. Or you can use, as I showed before, Google Street View or the Google Cardboard Camera. The Google Cardboard Camera is a little bit more convenient because you basically make a panorama picture like this. And it's even 3D because uh, they are, have an algorithm to um, uh, calculate 3D depends on if the camera is here or the camera is here. So unfortunately, Google Cardboard is only available for, for, for Android currently, but you can have a campaign sending this out, download this app, send us the best 360 3D pictures you have, and you have already a nice VR marketing with a lot of Bus, I guess, on Twitter, and you didn't invent or invest much money. So, this is, is an idea, I want to inspire you. <laughs> so, who tried AIDA for the example? 
Did it work? I mean, I, I, unfortunately, I skipped the part. <coughs> I have to go to the menu and to open it and click on the card that I like it. Uh, but was it surprisingly nice? Because you don't have to download the app, it just works in the browser. Was what at least okay, right? So what Aida and Tui did, a lot of hotels, uh, they made 360 pictures of all their rooms and all their cabins. So not just landmark cabins or the, the King's Suite or whatever. They made all of this kind of. And the use case is very interesting and useful. So when you go to a, a travel agency, the, the, key, the key problem is nobody goes there nowadays, but if you have a VR glass, there are people go more often there. Mm -hmm. So when you have like a catalog in front of you, nice pictures, nobody believes these pictures, right? It's like, oh nice, Photoshop, yeah, yeah. But the other side is the construction side, yes. And it's very difficult to imagine how, um, how the travel is. So what they do is they use a Samsung gear uh, in the travel agency. They have like three or four there to sh show the people. They, sh they show it through the ship, they sh show it through the hotels. And say this this is a little cost they are a little bit shot, sure. But you have like more feeling, you can look around, you can look at every corner, and you get a you get a little feeling how big the room is. Twenty square meters in VR and 360 feel like 20 square meters because you have like a, you know how deep it is. So you are you are basically there. But the most important or interesting point is the decision I would say you can maybe ask yourself, the decision is most of the time never made in the travel agency. People always go home and then they look on the internet if they can't find something cheaper, but at least they will discuss it with their family members. Do you want to go there? Do you want to go there? And then it would be very nice to have uh, Oculus or something at home, but it's quite expensive. So what AIDA and TUI is doing, they're giving out the cardboard with a link, like basically the link you just saw, and then you can do this uh, at home with a bottle of wine if you want to. Um, but you can go through the ship, you can even have the navigation here. So this is kind of like the desktop view you have, right? But if you click on the cardboard icon, you have the split screen. And they even made the navigation, the slide for that. they made the navigation like this, this uh, squares are floating around. If you look at them long enough, you go to the next one. You can even open the menu, you can navigate, you can even also go directly to some ship's parts. So you can browse them. Through the browser, yeah, that's now as that's the browser. So that's a quite sexy solution. You can so the whole customer journey, as people would say, part of it is happening here. It's not like you have to take it out, change, put it in again. No, it's made in here. And of course you can book. If you go back here, you can also book. But the booking itself is of course still on a normal laptop. Because typing in everything in VR, I think we are not that far, I don't think it's done this point piece. But you have like from the, the so-called pitch in the travel agency, you, have, you get the people with the ship, with the, with the picture, where they make the decision, and then they can buy directly your, your, uh, your vacation or tourism. And there's one more interesting thing. I don't know how many people have seen that before. In VR, the center point is always where you look. So you always know kind of at the point of interest of the people are. So you can, can generate kind of like heat maps like this. And uh, AIDA is already using this data to find the hotspots, which are the cool cabins, which are the interesting parts, which are the, the, the cool things people look at, and print this one in their catalog. So they let their customer choose which are the good pictures, by kind of like this, and put this uh, in their catalogs. You can do that with cars, of course, you can do that with um, houses, you can do that with Everything that is a 360 picture or video, or then later when they're moving, you, you know where people are looking. You don't need complicated eye tracking. For them, it's natural because they don't they don't have any device on them, just them. So that is also quite a cool, interesting example. So far, questions with 360 pictures, because then we we'll go to the videos. So, so the Aida thing was photos. Yes, that's only photos. Yes. Who saw the Bison video for all this? I actually have it here. I want to show because the the tricky thing about uh, 360 videos is uh, people most of the time. Oh, sorry, I'm doing this. They put a tripod, just put the camera on top, and then 
press record. And you need to have a little bit guidance at least for the for the, for the people who are viewing. Yeah. This is, the, in my opinion, the worst thing. I mean, this is a post 360. My PC is not fast enough to process this in the arm. But this is the worst thing you can show anybody. Because you get motion sick directly. Uh, roller coasters are not so nice. Maybe, maybe the feelings are nice. But if you really just. I mean, imagine this one directly here. You get directly dizzy. So I really don't understand some of my competitors who show roller coasters. It's the most horrible thing ever. <laughs> Or the other extreme is, and now I look at all the car companies, is uh, to make... Hi, I'm very nice. I do such things. Who knows this guy? He's like the, uh, the Leonardo DiCaprio of India. <laughs> so, and what they did is exactly that. Tripod there, and then he talks, and it's a nice time, it drives perfect. So if I skip forward, nothing changes. Just talking and blah, blah, blah. So it's it's uh, boring, <laughs> and then you have you have this from Mercedes, you have this from a couple of these here, uh, from Audi, from Volkswagen. Everybody is kind of like doing this, which is boring. I mean, it's nice you can look around, but then your attraction goes away. But you look out of the window, you don't listen to him anymore. It's kind of yeah, kind of awkward situation. So what what buys a bit? So first of all, they have a body because sometimes it's kind of weird for people to look down and they don't have a body, <laughs> right? So even though you turn female, if you are male, um, and you can you can clearly see where the attention should go, right? You have like some cookie chips, you have a mess. Load. Only stuff is going here because the worst thing for a 360 video is you look around and you have the feeling you're missing something. So it should be a pleasure, right? And then you have like a guy who pulls you in. But the, the attraction stays in the middle. I mean, it doesn't matter where you look, mm -hmm. but it's here. And in case you looked here, there's something nice to see. Here's nothing. But, ah, uh, sweet kitchen. Okay, I have to look there. And the audio. They have an arrow, right? So, normally when you look this in the eye, you see kind of like this. You see the log coming flying through you. You see already the mascot is running here. In case you miss that, you have an arrow. So there are three hints telling you to look around. It's more by us. And then listen. Hey, lady, come by us. So say, hey, just turn around. So it makes it very easy. Again, follow the cookies. So you never have the feeling that you're missing something. Because you have like a mascot, you're turning around. And these are two classic girls. And then the action is going here. She, she's doing stuff. They continue, but there's no more attraction. Here you have the text. Here you have the audio is describing this situation. Cookie boys. Nur die schaffen es, den Teig so fein auszurollen, dass die Tension ist hier. So dünn und knusprig. Und dann haben wir den nächsten Tag. Das ist unser Cookie-Tag. Und hier war der letzte Tension. Wir haben mit den Arrows gesprochen. Und der Messkampf ist hier. So in hier. Und das ist auch sehr interessant. Ich meine, sie sind hier nur, weil sie nicht leer sind. Aber sie sind hier und schauen in diese Richtung. Und wenn sie es wirklich verletzt und sie sich umdrehen, sie sind sie selbst so wie das. Look here again. So you always have to focus on this. Last week on the electrical collisions, that's how bad. Then you will see something. Or a creative from our own brother could be created. So and then this ended. So and how they use that is. People were having the Dunzo gear on, they were watching this video, and then directly after the video was shown, you got the cookie which was in the virtual before, so you get your own cookie directly. So they have like the kind of connection. You have the intro a little bit, they also have the mascot running around, they have the video with the nice items. And 
then at the end you get a cookie. So it's more like a story because sometimes you see here have a look, somebody standing there, and the next one, next one, next one. It's not like really connected. And one thing I forgot. Um, hello. It's actually not virtual reality because you're missing that you can move and you're missing the interaction. I will come to this later. Um, Google Cardboard is very important because uh, 2015, that was one year after they, Google, it's not Google's idea, right, but they made it big. So after one year they had one million pieces. At that time you couldn't buy an Oculus, uh, as a, as a non-developer, you couldn't buy an HTC Vive, you could buy, you could actually buy it from here already, maybe. I don't know, no? So there was nothing. That was one year, one million. One year plus six months, six months later, five million. Year to date, I would say in July, we are at 16 million pieces. Maybe if you calculate what's happening in America now, until now, maybe 18 million. If you calculate in China, maybe 20 million pieces. <coughs> paper, this one here. If you see the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, maybe 200,000, 400,000. Samsung here, now 1.6 million, 1.8 million. Like only like 10% of the whole cardboard or the whole VR market. Because as you saw, cardboard is easy. Just put your phone in, everybody has a phone. This one is just between 8 euros. I wouldn't buy the 5 euro ones, like between 8 and 16. You can even buy a plastic one. You can try, you don't have much to lose. You put your phone in, it works. And uh, that's in the Canadian embassy in the uh, UK. So even for kind of like, um, except this guy. <laughs> Everybody was fascinated, so fascinated that he even used two phones, I don't know why. But it, it, it's basically uh, for everybody. And when, when you look at the market, who made this 20 million? No, they are not bought by people, maybe like 6 million or 8 million are actually bought by people to try it out. But the most are made by companies who do VR marketing and try something at least. Um, the, the latest project was, it's also a well-made app, but still not released. For a two-liter vodka bottle, we made a cardboard which folds nice, perfectly to it. And they have like a tour between uh, behind the scenes of the of the brewery. You have some uh, U.S. barkeeper who is mixing cocktails for you in front of you. Everything nicely made in VR. So even kind of like companies that are old-fashioned, I would say, using VR as, as a good marketing tool on a shelf as a center. The best case or the interesting one is still the New York Times. Because they gave out 1 million cardboards to their subscribers and they're actually selling special 360 videos and content and they're actually making money with this already. So you can use it as a nice giveaway or you can even put a new business model on top already on, on, on what we have here at my company. This is also kind of like a business model because you sell it to, to schools or you sell it to Pearson, who has like the, it's like the biggest publisher for educational books. They are also very interested in this already. So, coming back to the slides we have saw before, that, virtual reality and cardboard. Is cardboard virtual reality? Let's see if the movement in the world. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't matter where you move. The video doesn't move or the app doesn't move. Um, who heard of Project Tango? Like six years old. It always gets delayed, but it's very interesting at least. Um, they have, a stereo, they have like two cameras, stereoscopic cameras, kind of like the, the Holoids, same principle. And they are checking for um, contours around you. There's a table, the, this wall would be horrible, but here you have these lines, this one on the floor. And the, since the phone sees 3D, it sees the contours, they can understand that you're going closer or that you're moving away. Just your phone. No external trackers like the HTC wires. Or like the Oculus with a camera coming uh, to you, because the problem is always when somebody is standing in the way, you have kind of like a sensor shadow, and you are invisible for the whole system. If you are looking inside out with the camera, you uh, you never have the shadow because you can even uh, use the other people in the room as, an, uh, as a as a reference point. So I would say, and I'm optimistic. Uh, Six, seven, eight months, I hope, with HTC or Lenovo, who are putting the phones out with VR support. We put it in, we walk around in your house, we rearrange maybe furniture in this one, we can look at the furniture, and the phone is understanding that you're moving. So we are, we are going to VR, 
also with carports. The interaction is one of the tricky things because currently you can you can push a button, but that's not really interaction. Um, but let me show you Daydream from Google. Who heard of Daydream before? Yeah, here we have the experts. So this is basically the the app we, we saw before, where you can arrange and can you replay. But you have now you have a controller now, where you can grab things in VR. This is uh, based on your phone, and you can just play it back and front again. So you have finally also controllers you can interact with. Or uh, something ridiculous, but also interesting, of course. Shopping. <laughs> it's a test, right? But at least you can you can put it on. You are together in a cardboard. <laughs> so then we have also like this part finally check. We can interact with stuff, we can move stuff. So just just with your phone and the controller and the head strap so it doesn't fly. Uh, it's the it's a Google controller, the daydream one. They haven't released it yet. I mean this are from their YouTube channel, but it looks like like this kinda. You have like two buttons. Um, they have like they work like a Wii basically, mm -hmm. like a Wii controller. They have, um, uh, they have made an SDK available so that you can use a second smartphone now to to, to test this and to write applications so that when the hardware is ready, the software is already there, uh, which uses this controller. Yes. So we are already also tackling the interaction part. Oh, this is actually a video from the high fives. You can also do high fives. But it has to be a real controller. It can't be like a cardboard. Uh, because you have to have. The uh, controller communicates with your smartphone, and, yeah. and the smartphone is just put into the cardboard. You don't need uh, a Samsung Gear or any. Yeah, but, you are, but you want is the. Lead. I want the cheap uh, controller. The controller is only like thirty bucks, I guess. Yeah, you only have like three sensors. In. It's basically it's a Bluetooth and three movement controllers. That's it, and two buttons. Because if you're talking about giving stuff away to customers, of course you don't want to try it for fifty bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, true, that's a good point. But there's a, there's a, something called leap where the camera of the phone is already recognizing uh, your hands. But the problem is when you do this, the hands are invisible, or they flicker currently. It's not working perfectly. But we also have the direction of it. But I think that will take maybe also two years. Or so. It's like kind of like the stuff is going, but everything gets smaller, everything goes in your phone. You only need your phone and good software, good cameras, good lightning. Uh, lightning, that's always a thing. And this is where the, where the train is running to. So, so talking about mobile VR or cardboard, I, I, I believe it's an opinion, uh, but it has a mass impact because we already have 20 million out in the market. It's very cheap, like between 3 or 8 euros if you want to custom print it. It's easy, you fold it up, more or less easy I would say. <laughs> At least the second time you know how it works. And you just put your phone in, you don't need to configure, you don't need to run, well, no cables, nothing. It works basically directly out of the box I would say. Um, as currently nobody has a Samsung gear, not everybody, you are, if you want to make a VR marketing, you're actually forced to give the cardboard to them because they don't have any intention as well. Maybe that changes in five years, everybody has something. Um, but for now, you need to understand this product because whatever VR campaign you make, this is important. Um, as the devices are getting better, this is the future. But also for cardboard, it's important. Don't make a roller coaster, don't make any nonsense app, make a good app, uh, which has value for the customer, right? You remember, if if the VR is the, 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 the virtual reality or the interaction in this thing needs to be the most important thing in the app. Otherwise, it's just a nice giveaway and people get maybe more easy. So, conclusion. Yeah, VR is on the trend and so on and so on. I think time is running out. So, but that's one thing I want to give you. Please all buy HTC Vive <laughs> <laughs> to play around. Invite everybody, get some chips, get some drinks, and just download all the, the stuff which is for free and just have a good time because that's the only way you can really make uh, VR work. You need to understand it. Okay.
I also put a selection on the homepage, fun games which work. You can also find the slides on next.vr.eu. So, <coughs> I'm done. Quick.